Hello everybody, my name is Raccoon Bro, and welcome back to another reaction video. It's time for a death battle! And today, we are going to be looking at two brooding, very, very looked down upon people in their respective universes because of the way they were born. Blake Belladonna from Ruby versus Mikasa Ackerman, Ackerman, Ackerman from Attack on Titan. I have made it no secret on this channel that uh, I love dunking on Ruby. It's it's a bit of a hobby of mine at this point, but that being said, I do have a lot of respect for it as a show and the fact that it's pretty much a completely independent, independently run giant cartoon that got really big, and that that's a pretty big deal, and I have mad respect for the people behind it. And when this matchup got announced, I... My main thought was, as long as it's good, as long as they, you know, make use of the environment, stuff like that, and that it's not set to one location like the last Ruby fight, because th it, that would be highly against what these two characters are about in their fighting style, so as long as it does that. And the sneak peek has me a little worried, because I noticed that Blake's line was literally just a recycled clip from Ruby, so I'm scared that we're not actually going to get any voice acting out of Blake at all. With, compared to Mikasa, who clearly has a voice actor in this fight. So I'm a little... That's got me a little worried, but I, I also I also listened to the track, it, though, and it is fantastic. It is easily one of the best tracks we've gotten in a while. Pr probably the best of the season so far, if you ask me. Uh... But that being said, I don't think anybody is as excited for this match as your only mate. Uh, every once in a while, we get our dream matchups, and uh, I hope this one lives up to your expectations, dude. Oh, with all that being said, let's get into the mayhem. Also, please note Boomstick Dad jokes, please. Oh, and as for the next time, I... I have... I have a gut feeling it might be Steve, uh, the Steven Universe matchup, but uh, I part of me does not want that because it would mean that we have blown through almost all of the characters that have been teased. So I'm, I'm hoping it's something new. Could be something with Dragon Ball. Uh, I'm I am pre fully prepared for it to be Marvel or DC. I I am prepared for that, and if it does happen, I'm willing to accept it. So I'm like Piccolo versus Martian Manhunter. Blake Belladonna, the feline huntress from Ruby, and Mikasa Ackerman, the giant killing scout from Attack on Titan. The scout. These two reluctant heroes are fighting for a better world. Yeah. What will happen when they go toe to toe to see who's the swingiest and the cuttiest? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. All right. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible discriminated against. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Inevitable. I wonder if JFK was thinking about anime cat girls when he said that. Despite the world of um, remnant being home that clone, to the that clone high days, reference, the man. The faunas were subject to discrimination from. Watch the Clone High. It's so one of the dumb. funniest shows. How humans be racist against faunas? Aside from looking slightly different, they're basically exactly the same. Oh. I get it. For most of her youth, Blake Belladonna worked with the Faunus activist organization, the White Fang. But when her parents expressed concern at its growing violent tactics, she ran away to join them fully. Like Yeah, Ginger Kylo Ren's influence was making it all cat girl supremacist -y. Believing the Faunus deserved to rule the world instead of humans, Adam Taurus turned the White Fang into a terrorist organization. With the young, impressionable Blake in tow, now Blake got to put her superhuman faunus abilities to the test as a gorilla fighter. She's not a gorilla, Wiz. She's clearly a cat. You dingus. That's not what as I... a clearly. I miss Blake from the first two volumes. I I miss how how much more quirky she was back then. <laughs> She's, oh well. Cat faunus. Blake's got superhuman strength, speed, and endurance. She can see in the dark and even pick up on sounds regular humans can't hear. Blake has also unlocked her aura, the manifestation of one's soul. Similar to the Eastern concept of Chi, Blake can use her aura to passively withstand intense damage. Though if it's overtaxed, she will be as defenseless as any ordinary human. Her aura survived this huge flying monster called a Nevermore crashing into her twice. <laughs> 
Measuring the size of the Nevermore. Very subtle the name. Structure it shattered. We can gauge it had to have fragmented over 2,000 cubic meters of rock. That means Blake's aura ate over four tons of TNT without even breaking. I guess you could say she, no, sold it. Eh? Eh? Don't try that again. We're gonna have to cut you with a sword as sharp as Gamble Shroud. It's everything you could ever want in a sick anime combo weapon. Part katana, part kasurigama, and it I do have to admit that is a pretty damn cool weapon. Gun. Hell, its sheath is a sword too. That's just showing up, and I like it. The 96 meter long elastic ribbon attached to the katana's hilt lets Blake use Gamble Shroud as a grab. Met the amount of times Blake and Yang wrap it around the Manticore Grim. Interesting. Hook for maneuverability and creative attacks. These and guys. will asset for the White Fang and her new boyfriend. Well, until he threatened to blow up a bunch of innocent people. Now, instead of a bad boy, he's just a boy that is bad. Horrified, Blake turned her back on Adam and the White Fang. And for the second time in her life, she ran away. It's like running away is her superpower. In a sense, it yeah. is. Blake's aura allows her to manifest a unique ability or semblance called Shadow. Born from her desire to escape, Blake can create a brief, intangible clone for deception, evasion, or even to propel herself through the air. She can even combine them with different kinds of dust, which is basically magic gunpowder. Fire <laughs> dust clones will explode on impact, while ice will freeze you solid. Though, once she runs out of aura, that's it for her semblance, too. Uh, Wiz? But yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I, I killed him, and it wasn't even on purpose! <laughs> oh, just some biological cloning. It's a hobby. Don't ask if I'm the original. I genuinely don't know anymore. <laughs> Alone again. Blake. Oh, that was brilliant. I, that was that was awesome. I loved that. Purpose and a place to call home. Until she reached Beacon Academy. There, she learned to be a huntress, a soldier of peace, sworn to protect the land from monsters and any that would do it harm. And she wouldn't do it alone. Doesn't even know Blake he's the would join up with fellow huntresses in training, Wei Shi, Yang Xiaolong, and Ruby Rose to make Team Ruby. Yeah. With the W. She didn't mm. just find teammates, but friends as well. Ugh, feelings gross. Don't worry, the power of friendship didn't get in the way of her kicking some ass. In fact, it made her even better at it. She's defeated the gangster Roman Torchwick, the kaiju side Si Fei Long, and the assassins Mercury and Emerald, and they could dodge natural lightning. Comparing the distance they traveled relative to the lightning bolt, we can determine they were moving over 26,000 meters per second, nearly 80 times the speed of sound. She even managed to stand up to Adam and all his mom just doesn't understand energy with the help of a new, way less toxic partner. Hmm. So long, you abusive a-hole! No easy feat considering Adam was strong enough to pulverize this massive spider droid with his moon slice, a feat worth over four tons of TNT. Not too bad for a bootleg Virgil, and Gamble Shroud could take hits like that over and over before breaking. Despite her troubled past, Blake would never stop fighting for a better, more peaceful, more equitable world. She was done running. Uh, her friends at her side, I had a feeling they would reference that meme. Future, head on. So long. Welcome to Scenic. I am very made. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> I have I have been warned. <laughs> I'm very curious if Mikasa has anything like lightning dodging. Chiganjina. Enjoy the rustic medieval architecture, hearty populace, and oh, oh, oh yeah, ooh, yep, that can't be good. Yeah. Going behind enormous walls, the last remnants of humanity were driven to near extinction by the arrival of the monstrous Titans. Despite that, Titans. little Mikasa Agarman lived a happy, normal life until her parents were brutally murdered in front of her. But never fear, she still sucks that Team, team Four Star can't assholes, finish Attack on Titan abridged. Another pint-sized psychopath in training. Adopted by Aaron's parents, Mikasa and Aaron somehow lived a happy, normal life. Nope. Until all their friends and family were brutally murdered by Titans. I'm sensing a pattern here. With barely anyone in Two's her a life lasting longer Three's than a pattern. A minute episode, Mikasa became Aaron's guardian angel. Certainly a valuable asset to Aaron, who devoted his life to exterminating the Titan threat. Together, they joined the military and got their hands on some sweet Titan slaying gear, the Vertical Maneuvering Equipment, or Vimy. 
Remy. Also known as omnidirectional movement or ODM gear in the anime, it allows Mikasa to fight the towering titans at their own level. ODM gear comes with two 20 to 30 foot long iron wire spears she can separately aim and shoot. It'll hook into any surface. They'll allow her to swing around like a steampunk Spider-Man. She can zoom through the air and change direction. Don't mention Spider-Man and Mikasa in the same sentence ever again. Never forget. She's on a dime with a special fan on her back that fires pressurized gas. Farting. That's called farting, Wiz. <laughs> I'll get another clone. I was wondering if they were going to improve that joke from the preview, but they did. Mikasa's ODM gear can propel her at speeds up to 366 kilometers per hour. That's almost a third the speed of sound. Assuming she can reach top speeds in a second, that's over 10 Gs of force, 10 times Earth's gravity. For reference, astronauts can stand about 3 Gs of force during liftoff, and fighter pilots can withstand up to 9 Gs for a second or two during aerial combat. Even just 6 Gs for a sustained period of time can be fatal for a human being, but Mikasa can survive almost twice that much and fight giant monsters at the same time. That insane speed makes her especially deadly when she whips out her special titan slashing swords made of ultra hard steel. And that's exactly the term I'd use to describe myself after watching what they can do to a titan. Despite their name, they're rather fragile, at least relative to the super tough titan skin they have to repeatedly cut. So Mikasa carries a set of 12 that she can easily dispose of and replace mid-combat. Yeah, that kind of became a problem when some super intelligent titans started sporting crazy tough armor. That's when Mikasa breaks out the big guns, the Thunder Spears! Essentially proto-bazookas, the Thunder Spears are thrown like javelins. They're sharp enough to pierce even the armored titan's impenetrable hide. And once their fuse is severed, they'll explode, devastating anything within range. Mm. Shattering the armored titan's armor is no joke. It was tough enough to tank punching a hole through wall Maria. By measuring the size of the gate in comparison to, uh, let's go with this guy. We can determine the armored titan violently fragmented over a thousand cubic meters of rock. That'd take over 18 tons of TNT, enough to level a city block, and the Thunder Spear shrank it. No surprises here. If you're too close to one of its blasts, it's game over. Despite the awesome power at her fingertips, Mikasa only really joined the military to watch over and protect Eren. Like a loving mother hen of death. And that became way harder once Eren learned he could also turn into one of those super intelligent titans. Now humanity's greatest weapon against the titan menace, Eren was at the center of all major anti-titan operations, which meant Mikasa was there too, ruthlessly dispatching anyone that might harm him. Get over yourself, Eren. So what if your childhood home was destroyed by a titan? You're living rent-free in this girl's head. And <laughs> it could be worse. You could be Armin. Man, Aww. like she's programmed to protect him. You're not off base. Mikasa's last name isn't inconsequential. Ages ago, the Ackermans were bioengineered to be subservient super soldier royal guards to the mighty Eldian Emperor. What? Yep. Wherever all that shit came from, Mikasa's got the Ackerman blood coursing through her veins. The same blood that gives her what? a fraction of a titan's power without transforming. Holy crap! It's that they have power of the titans was likely an exaggeration. It's that power that allowed Captain Levi, another Ackerman, to dodge point-blank bullets. That's over Mach 2, and Mikasa can easily keep up with him. It also lets her subconsciously tap into the combined experience and battle instincts of Ackerman's past. She's like the avatar of Titan murder. Unfortunately, this blood bond with Eren means that even when he goes too far, she's obligated to protect him, kind of like a robot. I don't buy it, Wiz. She doesn't love him because of her DNA. She loves him because he's the only one who stood up for her when she couldn't stand up for herself. When she looks at him and the rest of her friends, she sees a hope for a brighter tomorrow. Wow, Boomstick. That was... that was touching. And she has fart powers. Yeah. Well, it was nice while it lasted. I'm not listening to another word of this. No point. Get the right, point? The set, I think that enemy got the point. It's time for a death battle! Okay. I'll be very surprised if Mikasa wins this one because it just it seems like Blake uh, has a lot more abilities at her disposal. She seems to have 
better weapons, more rel and more reliable abilities. And I think she, I think the lightning feat is also going to be good for her speed. So I'm going to go with Blake. All right, let's see what we hey. got. Some billions were supposed to evacuate this area hours ago. Get the hell out of here. They're coming. You deaf? I said get the hell. <gasps> That's disappoint. That's disappointing. Are those two sets of ears? She must have four times the hearing. Nice. They are popping off with this choreography, damn! Damn. She likes popping those clones and attacking me from behind. I'm impressed with how anime like this is. Thunder Spears. I'm interested to see how this gets how this plays out. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I liked that a lot. I told her not to get too close to that thunder spear. Too bad she can't hear omniscient narration from beyond the fourth wall. Ooh. Despite Mikasa's overwhelming and frankly terrifying tenacity, Blake's varied arsenal and powers gave her a clear edge. The ODM gear allowed Mikasa to keep up with Gamble Shroud's agility, but in terms of offense, Mikasa was kind of a one-trick pony. And that's especially compared to the Swiss anime knife that is Gamble Shroud, which could stretch 10 to 16 times longer than either of Mikasa's cables. Blake's variety of shadows she could spam at will kept Mikasa guessing, and her aura allowed her to survive any attacks that could land. Yeah. To be fair, the Thunder Spears were a different story, and were powerful enough to shatter Blake's aura. The aura could survive around 4 tons of TNT, while the Spears' explosion could dish out over 18. But Blake's far greater speed made her nearly impossible to consistently hit. I had a feeling. 
Okay. While Mikasa could keep up with characters that can dodge bullets, Blake could keep up with characters that can dodge lightning. In this case, nearly 40 times faster than Mikasa. And those Thunder Spears are meant for big, slow titans, not human opponents, so it's unlikely she'd ever get a solid hit in with one. In that same sense, Mikasa's Ackerman heritage couldn't save her either. It may give her generations worth of combat experience Avatar style, but almost all of it was against titans, not a fun as Huntress like Blake, who has powers the Ackerman family has never seen before. Coupled with her Odium Gear's limited fuel supply and breakable swords, Mikasa just couldn't end the fight before her own options ran out. Mikasa had guts, but Blake's speed, versatility, and sick anime combo weapon yeah. over the edge. It may have been a gamble, but Blake had the spirit to win without a shadow of a doubt. The winner is Blake Belladonna. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Of oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's Blake Belladonna. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Francesca Callo, interesting. I, I, th it's a little. I think it's a little dishonest to say Aaron Zek, Starry Aaron Zek. Even though she, this, those were clearly, uh, those clearly weren't uh, custom lines made for this episode specifically. But I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm glad that they at least use her voice at all. To the death battle. As always, you can get our latest merch at store.roosterteeth.com, and also click down below to watch another video. <gasps> oh my God! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> Yeah! Woo! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be awesome! Yes! Oh, yeah. fuck yes! Oh, I'm so... <laughs> I'm so happy! I'm so happy! <laughs> oh, I... Oh, I never thought... Oh, I never thought... It. I never thought the day would come! <laughs> Oh, I never thought Poe would get to be on, but it's happening! <laughs> yes! Oh, okay. First off, uh, <clears throat> this episode, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy with how this episode turned out. Uh, I was, obviously, I was iffy about, uh, you know, the whole Blake's voicing, but I think it, it worked well enough here. Uh, plus, Blake isn't a very chatty character to begin with, so it's fine, like, and, and they used, uh, the sound, all the sound bites appropriately, and it was pretty cool seeing her, her uh, facial expression at the end, being like, getting ready to take on the Titan. Uh, there, there was a lot of really great art moments, uh, like uh, the reference to Yang getting her arm cut off and having it happen to Blake. Very nice touch, and oh, I'm very happy with the use of environment. And I know a lot of people are iffy about uh, the the frame rate, you know, so to speak, but I, I think. I really like it. I think it looks cool. I just, I think it looks cool. All right. Suit me. <laughs> and a lot of great jokes from the analysis. Uh, it was nice seeing Attack on a new franchise, like Attack on Titan getting introduced. Uh, yeah, o overall, I, I, this is a very good episode. And uh, my fears have been quashed about it. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. Poe is, po is one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite cartoon characters ever from an animated movie. I... I'm so happy they're bringing Poe into death battle. I don't, I don't give a shit about Iron Fist, but oh, I'm Poe. Oh, oh, oh I really hope he better win. <laughs> he had better win. So, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all liked the video as much as I did, and be sure to stay tuned for the next video. Take care. <laughs>